Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and I hope you're doing well. In my previous video, I talked about why and how I'm moving from Windows platform to Linux platform for my studio music production. If you haven't watched that video, I will leave a link in the top corner there somewhere, uh, as well as in the description, you can watch and find out those reasons. And in this follow-up video, I'm going to try to demonstrate how I'm going about installing everything that is audio related as well as I guess video related as well so I can do video editing for YouTube. You might recognize that I've installed Linux Mint Cinnamon Edition for my OS. Some people did uh, recommend me to install Ubuntu Studio, which has everything pretty much set up, and also AV Linux. But uh, there are a few reasons which I haven't gone that part. One is, as I explained in my previous video, I'm quite familiar with uh, Linux Mint Cinnamon Edition, which is Ubuntu based anyway. And Ubuntu Studio, for me, it just has too many things already on there, and I don't want that many things installed. It's too Crowded is probably the word I would describe. I have installed it. I did have a look at it, but it's not something I want to try. Um, maybe in the future, but at the moment I've gone to Linux Mint. And as to AV Linux, which is audio video Linux, which is purely dedicated for uh, audio and video production, the reason I didn't go that part is with no disrespect to the guy that actually uh, creates that distribution, only because it's a one-person um, distribution. So if he goes away or if he gives up, you know, they're pretty much stuck, really. And it did look a little bit outdated to my um, sort of taste of, you know, I'm not too, I don't like too flashy things, but at the same time, I like things to be included, easy to access and easy to know and navigate the operating system. So those are the reasons why I didn't go the Ubuntu Studio part and the AV Linux part. Of course, I have tried uh, Fedora, I have tried Manjaro and all of those ones as well, but they become a little bit more time-consuming to get everything running. But one thing that we're going to go through today is I'm going to install parts of the Ubuntu Studio using the Ubuntu Studio installer to install only the programs and the functions that I need for audio production as well as video production. I don't do any uh, publishing. I don't do any photography work. I don't do anything in vector-based or animation and any of those things. So the Ubuntu Studio installer it will allow me to select the different modules that I want and just install them on Linux Mint. And one other reason I wanted to try Linux Mint as my operating system uh, for this um, is that it also supports Flatpak already within it. And Flatpak are different distribution system and like a um, um, sandbox environment of things. And I have tried... And I was even able to run Cakewalk by BandLab, which is only available on Windows, using Bottles, which is sort of um, you know easy to install Wine environment for it. And I was able to run it with not many issues, be able to record tracks um, and mix songs with it, uh, as I said, with not too many issues. So that's something I want to do as well. Also, it's much easier for me to try to install and run Windows VST plugins in my Linux environment. So those are the reasons why I've chosen Linux Mint. Of course, you can install Flatpak in other distributions, but since already included in Linux Mint, that's something I don't have to worry. Because the audio part, I can work things out. I have already done a lot of research and um, tried lots of uh, uh, features and tests and um, and I've got it working but system things 
in Linux, I'm not too familiar. And having said that, I am by no means at all uh, expert in Linux. That is something way out of my league. But I'm quite efficient in learning and understanding systems. So that's where things are at. So let's open up our... Uh, where are we? Oh, software manager and install Ubuntu Studio installer first. Right, let's search Ubuntu Studio dash installer. Here we are. So, and if you are following what I'm doing, and if you want to do that in the future for your system, that's the reason I'm showing how it's done. So I'm going to click install and let it download all of the dependencies and everything. Let's put in our password. So the Ubuntu installer is, it's not the Ubuntu Studio itself, but an installer that gathers all of the different modules of Ubuntu Studio for creative work and uh, you can select which modules you want to install on your system. Okay, now that we've got it installed, let's launch it. All right, hope you can see it on the screen. So for audio production, we definitely want low latency kernel, and we want the settings as well, and the performance tweaks. Of course, we need audio, so all the audio packages. I will also select the video packages because I want uh, some video production. So I guess the, the video you're going to be watching this is going to be edited uh, using a video editing package there. And wallpapers, I don't really need it. Uh, I do want the menu and music education application bundle. No, I probably don't need that either. So those are the modules I want to install. Of course, if you want to add photography or graphics or publishing, you know, you can add those, uh, whatever your needs are. But for me, that's all I wanted installed. So I'm going to select that. Okay. Uh, now, because it's going to use change the kernel, okay, so there's I might have to stop the video. I need to restart as well. And you can just follow whatever gets you get prompted on the screen. And um, I'll be back once Ubuntu Studio has been installed with those modules that I've selected. Now, it will take some time to download and install. So give it its time, I guess, depending on your internet speed. And be patient and it'll be all done. So now that we've got everything installed and system restarted, so let's uh, have a look. Uh, what software it added. It added audio production and just a little further below the video production, which uh, like a folder for every other program within that category. So we've got audio production, I've installed Ardor, Audacity, and a few others there, as we can see. We can have a look at it at uh, another time. And for video production, we've got... Um, KDN Live, which I'm hoping to use to edit this video and a few other things in there. Blender, I don't use Blender, but it's installed it anyway. But before we go ahead any further, the, we need to set uh, one uh, configuration for the audio, and that's the Ubuntu Studio Audio Configuration. Because to my understanding, the way Linux works, and especially the audio, is that we... Uh, it, it it's all dynamic. The buffer size and the sample rate is all dynamic, dynamic, depending on what's being used, what's being played and recorded, and so on. That's really great for a general day-to-day -day watching a video, listening to music. It will adjust automatically. You don't have to worry about it. But when you are doing uh, production, like audio production, recording, uh, I believe it's much safer to have settings uh, which are set, like our buffer size and our sample rate. So for that, we go to Ubuntu Studio Configuration and run that. And I'm going to say Configure Current Audio Configuration and Continue. And here we can set the buffer size 
and the sample rate as the um, fixed values. Okay, so for me, for general purpose, I'm just going to put 512. Um, only because I don't need low buffer size because I don't do direct. Uh, I do direct monitoring most of the time when I'm recording, and I don't uh, use any plugins. Go so the audio going to the DAW and coming back, like guitar effects and so on, guitar amp effects and so on. So for me, 512 is fine. Then when I'm mixing, I have plenty buffer to work with. And for the sample rate, I always run 4800 as my default. And we click OK. And I'm just going to put my password there to set it. Yep, so pipe wire quantum set to 512 buffer and 4800 hertz uh, or 48 kilohertz sample rate. All good. So we can close this one now. The next, let's have a look what we've got. We've got audio production. As you said, we've got Ardor, which I haven't set up, Audacity, and so on. Um, okay, let's see what color control is. Okay, what do we have? Uh, or am I looking at the wrong one? Okay. I think we just have to look at color. Here we go. Batch Bay. Once we click Patch Bay, now we can actually see all my hardware that's connected. My webcam, audio of, for, from the webcam, the built-in analog, my AG03, which one I'm using now, where this microphone is connected, and here's OBS, right? And then my on mod, onboard audio output, the output from my AG03, and here is the most important one and the whole reason why I'm changing to Linux. This is my LSS Master Control Firewire Audio Interface and Surface Control. And here you can see it detected without any problems, no issues, no drivers, nothing. And then I can see my 16 inputs and the monitor outputs as well as the playback. It's all there. This is my HDMI audio input and HDMI audio output. Um, never used. That's for my monitors. And this is a more important one. Of course, this is the output as well for my audio interface. And it should work pretty much straight away. And also all of my MIDI stuff here. I've got my Behringer uh, Motor 61, which is my MIDI controller keyboard that detected it. Um, the USB communication for my Yamaha AG03, my master control for my surface control is there, as well as the physical MIDI in and out uh, of master control, all recognized without any issues. So if I had a microphone connected to the input of my uh, Alice's Firewire audio interface, I should be able to direct that to OBS, but I don't have anything connected at the moment. Maybe next time I can demonstrate that. Um, so let's uh, have a look, see if we can run something like, um, keep it simple, let's run Audacity. Let's run Audacity, hopefully it won't crash. Here we go, Audacity, don't show it startup. Okay, and let's click can I add the track before eating? I don't use Audacity, so I'm not sure how this works. File. No, I just let's let's just select the audio setup. Uh, host. Audio connection kit, I guess. Jack. Okay, let's try that. Uh, did it appear there? No, I don't know. <laughs> uh, playback device. I wanted to be. Um, I guess OBS. Let's did that work? Nothing there. No, not yet. And recording device. We want it to be um, yeah. And uh, yeah, let's try 
my my uh, so my AG03 microphone. Recording channels, stereo, all good. I think we've done. Let's let's hit the record and see what happens. So uh, I'm talking. Yep, and OBS is recording. And as you can see, while it's recording, I've got the capture, which is the microphone, left and right from my AG03, it is going to OBS as well as my port audio, which is um, Audacity, right? Right there. And I can uh, press stop, and then that disappeared automatically because that's what we set it to. So that's the... Uh, that's that's a really great ad advantage of how things work in Linux. So if we go back and press play, so uh, I'm now talking, it's yep, playing. And, yeah, OBS is recording, and, and hopefully, as you can see, my while it's recording, I've got the capture, which yeah, is the microphone. You can hear that right from my um, AG03. Turn this down a bit. Going to that's not OBS too loud. As well what as my we recorded in Audacity. Port audio. Which okay, is, you can see uh, in my OBS right there. Audacity. Uh, how that's right. all working. Right well, I hope it is working. And if I stop playing that, it dynamically disappears and um, free to use for something else. Of course, next time I click record again, let's put the cursor there and let's hit record and it will automatically capture that and record it again. Perfect. Well, I hope this was... Um, informative and demonstrative enough you can see how things work in linux and i'm um, i am really happy so far i haven't not had any crashes or anything with my um, master control firewire interface as you can see i can run audacity and record it of course i can set up outdoor and run that again but my main aim is to set up um, reaper and hopefully Reaper may end up being my main DAW, but I also have Mixbus uh, from Harrison Mixbus version 10 as well. That could be another DAW that I, that I could use. Also, I'm hoping that I'll be able to test the public beta version of Studio One for Linux. If those things interest you, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can follow up and see how feasible it is to run a recording studio semi-professional in a Linux environment. So far, so good. No problems, no issues. Great advantage of patching inputs and output uh, within the system itself. So that's really great. For me, it's pretty exciting. So if you, this video was helpful and you like it, make sure you give me the like button and uh, feel free you to use the comment section below to let me know any other greater ideas that I could use and try something that I might miss in my process of using Linux as my operating system for my audio production. And yeah, I look forward to that. Until next time, as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music. And I'll catch you in the next one. Cheerio, guys.